Good morning. We are in the second Sunday of a three-part series looking at love languages. Last Sunday, we talked about words of affirmation. And today, through the sermon, we will reflect on acts of services and quality time. So for his spouse's 40th birthday party, Will Smith decided it would be the best party in the world. He started planning three years in advance. On her 37th birthday, he hired a team to help him orchestrate this birthday party. This was going to be the birthday party that people talked about. He did a documentary researching his wife's background. He found voice tapes of her grandmother's voice. And with a room full of people, she heard intimate disclosure from a lady that she loved. Followed by a mini concert by the Mary J. Blige. Her 40th birthday party became this project to show her just how much he loved her. Will Smith gets an A plus for acts of service. Other spouses commented, I wish I had a loved one like Will to love up on me. But by day two, Jada is feeling overwhelmed. All she had wanted was intimate time with her family. The bling bling had never excited her. Will had assured her when he was planning her birthday party that he had this. She kept trying to tell him her love language was quality time. Will had it. He had it until he didn't. Often we speak to others the love language that is mostly comfortable to us. We speak to others often in our own love language. And then we don't understand why people are not as receptive. I'm just trying to love you. Can't you see how much I love you? Why can't Jada see I did all this for her? I love her to the moon and back. Except Jada doesn't like acts of service. Jada likes quality one-on-one -on -one time with a few intimate people she cares about. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Two sisters sharing space with two different love languages and a guest who's coming who excels at the first language, words of affirmation. So Martha, similar to Will, is like, we got guests coming to town. Martha is in work mode. It's time to clean the house. It's time to get the groceries. It's time to prep the food. It's time to ensure accommodations are up to par. It's time to create a mood and a vibe. It's time to put the china and set the table. It's time to burn the scented candles. It's time to go all out, because Jesus is coming to our house today. Oops, he's already here. I imagine sweat pouring from Martha's face with some anxiety and stress threatening to undo her. So let's pause and give a shout out for the Marthas in our life. You got the lovers, you got the dreamers, you got the folks who envision, you got the fighters, you got the protectors, you got the drama kings and queens, you got the wannabe have-beens and washed-ups. And while all of that is happening, the Marthas of this world are making it happen. They are the doers. They can take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and make something out of almost nothing. Our world needs them. They show up faithfully, they are loyal, and rarely do we appreciate them because they're always there. We come to rely on them without even knowing how much we're leaning on them. I was looking at our annual report and seeing a bunch of Marthas in our annual report. The Marthas have always had us. And so Martha is like, Mary, pull your weight. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I might get by with a little help from Mary today. If Mary would just get up off her blessed assurance, I need some help. Mary is in a zone. 
but Martha is in a funk. We need our Marthas, but we also need our Marys. That causes us to ponder. We need our Marys to help us to slow down. We need our Marys to say pause. We need our Marys to say, hey, let's stop. We need our Marys to help us enjoy the moment. Because Martha had already thrown Mary under the bus, Jesus' words of affirmation are for Mary on this occasion, but really for them both if you ponder. Martha Mary has chosen to sit at the red table today. She has chosen to be present to this moment. I don't come to your house often. Actually, never. Today is an important moment. And I know how you like things to be, but I need you to be. I know you got a to-do list, but today I need you to let it go. I know you want things to be perfect, but right now I need you to enjoy this imperfect moment. Mary, Martha, and Jesus had three different love languages. Mary was quality time, Martha was acts of service, and Jesus was words of affirmation. Last week, Jesus told the sexualized single woman who hooked up with the Mary man to go live your best life. And today he says to Mary, sit down and listen. That goes for you too, Martha's. Mary is like Jesus is at our house. This is better than those Beyonce tickets. And I don't even have to leave my house. Let me put my cell phone on vibrate because I don't want to miss a word that Jesus has to say. And Martha is like, it's got to be right. Everything has just got to be right. They are all loving, loving others in the way that feels most natural to them. Love is love is love is love. Ever heard someone say that? If you think that you're, if you think that that's true, then you're missing the point of the word of the Lord today. We understand and respond to love differently. Ask LaShonda. Her mom loved art, and when she met a struggling artist, she decided to buy her loved one's personal paintings done by this talented artist. This Christmas, she was going to get all her loved ones a personal painting. How good does it get? LaShonda, at the time, was obese and really didn't like her size. And on Christmas Day, when she opened her gift there before her, was the version of herself she had avoided looking at. And without pause, LaShonda began to cry. And that cry turned into a weep. Not exactly the effect her mom had been going after. It was only then that her artistic mom realized, oh boy, I think I really messed up on this gift. But how do you salvage Christmas Day or any day when you've spent your money on a personal painting. Sometimes when we choose to love people the way we want and not their preferred language, we find ourselves getting less than optimal effect. LaShonda, Jada, and Martha, how many more missing out on being loved in their love language? A teacher is known for her ability to move kids forward. This teacher has a standard approach with a little bit of creativity, except she has a new kid and nothing is working. She could say something is wrong with that child based on her record, and maybe she would be right. But this teacher loves connecting with students. Harry Potter years ago changed literacy in America. Kids who didn't like to read found themselves following a story, and so reading seemed like less work and more fun. Another teacher teaches difficult math concepts and grammar rules through rap music. Every kid knows the song. It connects. It's all about speaking one another's language, learning, being open. Love is complex and willing to go the mile. So if your friend is like Martha, who is into acts of service, take them to the theater and let them pick the movie. Make a Spotify list of their favorite songs. Offer to, parent, offer to parents to take their kids for a Friday night out. Or for seniors to the grocery store. Put the toilet seat up or down, preferably down, amen? 
Fix a meal for someone or buy them an Uber gift card. Show up for someone in grief and offer to clean their house. Pamper or give someone a spa gift card. Subscribe someone to their favorite magazine. Provide tech support for your not tech savvy friend. Offer to take care of your neighbor's pet when they're going out of town. Run at neighbors when you find out someone has COVID. Make a care package for someone that's facing a difficult task. One lady made Easter bags for her kids every year. Her own Easter bag. Her kids are adults. Do you hear me? Her kids are adults who have their own kids and they still want what? They want those Easter bags. For people whose language of love is acts of service, that means doing for others. And yet, there are Marys who enjoy quality time. It's all about being there for. It's not what you do, it's how you show up. For them, it's being in the moment. Lose the technology. They want your undivided attention. They want you. Find time on your schedule to hang out with them. Pick them up and surprise them. The surprise won't matter because it's all about spending time with you. Take them to a cooking class. Have a Netflix binge night. Pack a picnic and eat on the lake or winter mix. Build a fire on the lake. Read a book together. Plan a day trip. Play a game. Go dancing under the stars. Meet up for laser tag or miniature golf or bumper cars. The auto show is coming up. Let's meet up and look at some cars together. Meet up, it's Super Bowl Sunday. When we take time to learn someone's language, it can only improve the flow of love between us. There's this beautiful song that says, because your love is my love, and my love is your love. It would take an eternity to break us, and the chains of Amistad couldn't hold us. When we speak other people's language, we see them light up. We connect. We touch souls. Helen Keller was born intelligent and smart. She learned how to talk and walk relatively easy. And then at 18 months, Helen Keller got sick. And at the end of that sickness, she was deaf and she was blind. But she was still intelligent and smart. But she was locked in a world all by herself. Her parents were devastated. How do we communicate to her? How do we get to her? How do we make sure she knows that she is loved? How do we nourish her? How do we cultivate her? And they found a teacher, found a couple of teachers, and it seemed like nothing was working. And then one teacher found a connection with water. Well, water. One teacher broke through, and when that teacher connected, it was on. Let us find ways to one another. Once we find our loved one's language of love, let it be on. And we can sing too. Your love is my love. Come on, y'all. And my love is your love. Your love is my love. And my love is your love. And it would take an eternity to break us united. So while February the 14th is Human's Day to celebrate love, every day is Christian's Day to love one another. Amen. I'm curious how many of you think your language of love is words of affirmation? How many of you think that your language of love is words of affirmation? Okay, so, okay, a couple people, 
couple of people, maybe. You're thinking about it, Anne. We're going to have next week, and I'm going to ask folks, really, when we've talked on all five languages, how many of you think your language of love is acts of service? You're a Martha. You're feeling that acts of service. Get up off your blessed assurance and help me out. Okay, we got, some, we got some Marthas in here. I knew that. How many of you, it's quality time? Give me quality time with my boo or whomever. And it is on. Quality time. Next Sunday, we will be talking about the last two, which is gifts and physical touch. So I hope that you will come back. And I hope that we will learn how to love each other even better and better. Amen.